Hey there, everybody. I'm going to continue on with my stories um, from my uh, pictures. About Yeah, so last time I did one, we talked about my Grandma Smith. So that's my, my dad's mom. So my dad there is Jim Smith, born 1951. My mom there is Denise Smith, born 1953. And um, I was born in 1975. Now... I think my parents picked a very interesting time to show up. So they were there to kind of see the whole, um, you know, the whole hippie thing and all that, you know, the whole rock and roll thing, what I call uh, the, the cultural revolution and its unfoldment. So um, so my mom's uh, more to the hippie side. I guess they would call her, the, what, a flower child. She, she likes more like, um, she really likes rockabilly stuff like Dave Edmonds, uh, Nick Lowe. But, um, when she was singing in a band, they were doing like Linda Rodstad, Evely Brothers. So she's kind of more old school where my dad's more into like rock and roll. And he went on to the like what they call underground back in the day would be um, uh, garage band. So he collected a lot of stuff like that. And then, um, you know, when we had more like art, rock, avant-garde, all this type of stuff into the 70s, he was uh, paying attention. So um by the time I was born, he was getting into electronic music, listening to a lot of Kraftwerk, Tangerine Dream, and anything like that. So um, that's always been kind of my first favorite music. So um, um, so I was born cross-eyed, actually. Um, <clears throat> and they had to put me under the knife. And then um, <clears throat> my earliest memories would be living at my Grandma Weaver's house. That's my mom's mom. I don't remember my grandpa weaver, but I definitely remember my grandma weaver and um and living there like some of my earliest memories um would be those guys teasing me about being born under a cow pie now it kind of hurt my feelings. I thought it was a mean joke, but now that I'm older, I think what they were trying to say is that um maybe they were tripping on mushrooms and if I grow up to be a tripper like they are, maybe I'll figure it out. Um, if not, then maybe I won't. But I, I kind of wonder if that's the uh, <laughs> that was their little clue and their little joke that I would catch on many years later. Anyways, um, that being said, I would say our culture is, you know, we're like rock and roll people. We're part of, you know, urban uh, psychedelic spirituality, whatever you want to call that. That's the kind of culture we're from. Some people will say I'm a, from a Christian family, so on and so forth. Um, well, in our family... Um, I feel like uh, if we would have stayed in Michigan, we would have all been in the music business. Well, anyways, um, when I was about uh, two, three years old, I got in a lot of trouble because my dad caught me getting into his records. Now, I must have been eating candy and had some sticky fingers. And I explained this all to me later that he caught me getting craft work out and trying to play it. And he got really pissed off because he, you know, he really values his music collection and I was in there ruining it. So he picked me up by my arms and just yelled at me. And when he let me down, I rent and... Uh, I sat down right there and I, and I cried. No, he did apologize because you know he's the one that explained why <laughs> why he had that picture of me sitting there crying on the steps because he realized you know some Jody has good taste in music so that's kind of something that my father and I have bonded over is that um that I uh, I liked his music I really loved electronic music particularly and as you see i grown up to be a synth. I'm, I'm turning into a synthesizer geek eventually here. Um, so anyways, um, I was also sitting there crying uh, because I can also remember one of my earliest nightmares that I had before uh, I ended up in that spot there. Um, crying is because I didn't want to go down past that pipe. I had a nightmare that the pipe came to life. And I was kind of like going like this and trying to bend over and, and, and hit us. Like me, my mom, my Aunt Charlene, my sister were all trying to go down that staircase. And my Aunt Charlene had to use like a, um, like, like a heat pad to hold it up and let us buy. And so it's kind of funny that I was afraid of the pipe because I had had that dream. Then I got in trouble with my dad and kind of saw him, you know, really lose his temper. That's probably one of the first times I've ever gotten him that mad. And then, um, one of my earliest memories living at that house would be, uh, that I had a dream that could have been a near-death experience, but I'm not sure because, uh, what was happening, um, so I was going through a tunnel and there just seemed to be somebody back here talking to me that I thought was my sister. And when I asked where we were going, they said we were going to school. And I thought, okay, that makes sense because, you know, I would see my sister running out to catch the, uh, the yellow bus to school and I couldn't wait to grow up old enough to, uh, I can't, like, I can't wait to go to school so I can learn. So I kind of, I must have knew what that meant to go to school and learn. So, 
Um, and sometimes when you're in the other the side, you know, like you have a guide, sometimes you'll think it's somebody, you know, so it's like, this guy took me through the white tunnel and into an opening, you know, and I felt like this was a playground. It was like the most freest place where you could do anything you want. And then I woke up in my mom and dad's bed the next morning, you know, so um, and later on I read about near-death experiences. I thought, that's funny. I must have had a dream about it because there's no reason... Uh, why I should have a near-death experience unless I've been having breathing complications. Now, um, my dad says he remembered that because I passed out and they could wake me up. So I guess if I was having a near-death experience, it's a damn good thing I didn't finish dying and I came back. So the reason I'm bringing up some of this stuff, you know, like I've been put under for the cross-eyed uh, surgery. Um, I had uh, gone into the white later. Or maybe just had a dream about it. Um, sometimes when things like this happen to people, it changes them. And um, and then when they grow up, they have more psychic experiences. And um, it can really make you kind of different and stuff. So um, anyways, I thought I'd share this as um, a good intro to um, my life. Because there are three main things going on here. Is, um, I've had a need to, uh, to go to martial arts training. Because, you know, uh, my father had... A bad temper and so I've inherited that or you know I take after him inevitably and so we have to master that and so maybe going to martial arts was where I was looking for my discipline with you know anger and violence and then um and then of course music so I kind of get those things from this point in my life where you know I really um, love music that's when we realized I really love electronic music and, and so the next thing I really hope to spend time on is music so I put in time with martial arts and then spirituality comes from some of the unusual experiences I've had throughout my life like you know dreaming about the white light and then another video I've made about seeing an apparition in Port Huron in my bedroom um, things like this and so that's kind of what brought me to Montana so I put in 13 years taking care of Rosie and I've known her longer than that and um anyway so th those three things kind of tie in throughout my life and um and I think you know again I've, I've grown up to be in pretty good shape and all that stuff but I'm still like to uh, share a little bit about my life and um, how, how one thing kind of leads to another and then you'll kind of understand you know you know how did I get where I am why am I talking about uh, some of these things you know why, why am I um, why have been to this martial arts school why have I been uh, to this music scene so anyways you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you soon